Of course I'll forgive their iniquity and I'll remember their sin no more, like the father of the prodigal son. But forgiveness isn't the big thing. I mean, just to be forgiven, we're not in legal trouble with our God. That's the least problem. The real trouble is that we don't listen. We wander after other gods and we reap the consequences. If only we'd listen, if we'd come back and get to know him and decide that we like what we see. We really love, trust, and admire God. Uh, he can do anything for us and with us. And we say, well, am I also forgiven? Don't worry about that. I'm forgiveness personified. That's the least problem. The biggest problem is to win people to come back and listen and then follow the instructions. And God says, I'm very sympathetic with you. You're not going to be able to perfectly do what I ask you to do. But I know better than to ask a person who suffered from arthritis for 20 years to ask that person to run the four-minute mile upon leaving my office. I won't do that. I'm just saying, keep coming. Stay with me, and I can perfectly heal the damage done. So we die, and generation after generation have died. And among them there have been friends of God who've died, many of them not perfectly restored. Which one of us has been physically restored? To the stature of Adam and Eve anyway. And so we have died, not the people we'll be someday, but we die God's trusting, admiring friends, patients, children. And we arise the next moment from the best sleep we've ever had, and all is restored. Anybody got any complaints? Does that sound legalistic? Arbitrary? It's so reasonable. But God says, if you don't listen, I can't even tell you this. So you're not listening. Well, then I won't tell you. Oh, he doesn't let go that easily. So you're not listening. How about a little thunder, a little lightning? How about some earthquake, two she bears? You know, all those things he's tried to get our attention. And then he says, that won't work. What can I do? And he comes down in human form. And he goes through all that he did those three and a half years treating people incredibly well, treating his worst enemies unbelievably well, and then suffering the way he did, and dying the way he did, and praying for them as he died. And then he looks at the human race to see if they're impressed. Not even the early Christians were much impressed at first. God says, what more can I do? You see, if all of that does not move one, what can God do but sadly give us up? And he weeps as we go. Ezekiel says so. Book after book says so. Romans is so clear on that. God is not willing that any should perish, but he cannot force us to do the things he wants the most. To trust him first, enough to be willing to listen. And then as we listen and we learn more about him, we come to, quote, know him. To love him, to admire him. Then we were all the more willing to listen. And then it's a law we become like the person we worship and admire. And it's all, quote, natural.